Hello, today I'm going to show you about rotocasting the legs for my Iron Man suit. If you'd like to see more about the projects in general, you can have a look at my website, which is xrobots.co.uk. So the moulds I made for the legs and arms are basically made specifically for rotocasting, which means basically pouring resin into the mould and rotating it round till it basically solidifies on the inside of the mould to make a hollow shell. So. Um, for that reason I've made moulds with one seam line, so this is the mould for one of the shins which is basically one continuous piece of silicon all the way around with one seam line which basically means there's less clean up in the finished cast um, as opposed to making a two piece mould with a seam line at the back and front or each side. And this is the uh, rigid mother mould basically which is made of fibreglass so these two halves fit together and the silicon mould goes in the middle so I'm just going to put that together and I've got um, some holes drilled so I can bolt the two halves together and that will hold it all together while we do the rotor cast. So the mould is all back together in one piece. You can see I've bolted it together along each edge of the rigid mother mould. The silicon part of the mould is back inside. So that's the inverse of Iron Man's shin which we're going to pour the resin into. So I'm using Smooth On 65D Rotocast resin again, which I've used for most of the pieces of the suit. So it's specifically designed for rotocasting, um, which means basically it starts as liquid and sets through to a gel and then finally turns solid, so it gives you time to rotate the mould. If you want to see how I made this mould, then there's a step-by-step -step on my website. There's a link in the description of this video. You can do rotocasting with a machine, which rotates the piece around for you whilst the resin sets, but I don't have one of those, so I'm going to be doing this manually. So um, I've also got a pair of gloves because the fiberglass is a bit spiky on the outside. And the other safety thing is that you should always use polyurethane resin in a well-ventilated area or wear a respirator, and you should read the material safety data sheet from the manufacturer. So I'm just gonna put this camera on a tripod and then we'll get on and do the rotocast. I think we need to make this piece about two kilograms, so I'm going to be weighing the mould as I go on a set of scales, which I've got just here, so that we know how much resin we've put in, and when we get to about two kilograms, we'll know that's enough. So I've got the two parts of the smooth cast measured out there, and I'm going to mix them together, and then we'll pour them in, and then we'll get going. I think it's going to take probably something like um, eight lots of resin to get up to two kilograms because I can't pour too much in at once because then it will spill out of the ends of the mould. So we've got to do it in smaller quantities. Make sure we keep adding it just before the last coat is um, cured basically so it all bonds together in one piece. So let's just mix these together. may use larger cups if this goes okay so that I can do less passes of resin but for now we'll just use this small one so I'm just going to pour that in and then we'll have to just keep rotating this around which is Let's just see how we're doing at the other end. I've deliberately made quite small holes in the mould at each end to uh, minimise the amount that spills out. Basically we just need to keep that rotating round until the resin goes off. So we're up to about a kilogram, I've done about three coats, I'm actually using a bigger beaker now so I can put half a kilogram in at a time so we should only need about two or three more. So you can see I've had a massive spillage where lots of the resin leaked out of one end of the mould when I wasn't being careful. But now if we look inside, it doesn't look that good on film but basically it is quite white on the inside so I just need to carry on. The mould started at seven kilograms and that weighs eight kilograms so I just added about another, probably another kilogram and a half. 
and um, leave it for a bit and then we can demould it. I think this is the second to last pass that we'll have to do. If we can see in there. Some, we should be able to see some resin pools at the bottom. Just have to keep this rotating around. It's not my favourite task. And as you can see, I've made quite a mess. Sometimes I just have to pick the whole thing up and look in the end to see where it is. Make sure we've got it evenly coated. Looking pretty good actually. There's a few strings that have cut across where it's dripped as it's drying. That's mostly due to the manual rotation. We can clean those up later. Need to make sure I get it into all of the detail, particularly this lump on the knee, which is quite annoying. So I think one more after this, and we should be up to our two, just over two kilograms, hopefully. So that's the last pass of resin. Um, basically the mould weighs 9 kilograms now, it started at 7 which means we've got 2 kilograms in. Hopefully you can see inside there, it's quite white on the inside. If I'd used the machine it would be perfectly smooth, but obviously I haven't, so it's a bit ripply but I can clean some of those. And if I need to clean any big lumps out I can do so. You can actually feel the heat coming off this now, it's got quite warm. Uh, basically because the polyurethane gets warm as it cures. So. I need to leave that probably for a couple of hours with that quantity of resin and then we can strip off the mould and hopefully we should have a perfect cast. So it's about an hour or something later and I can feel that the resin is cool which means it's cured and um, had some problems in the past demoulding too soon when it's still warm and then the piece warps because it's not cured properly so it's, if you've got the time it's best to leave it for as long as you can. So. Uh, I've already removed the bolts and um, should be able to just pull off the rigid, the rigid mother mould. Let's put that down there. And with any luck, yeah, there we go. Okay, now easy enough. And then, if we find the seam line of the silicon, we should be able to uh, get this piece out of here. Yep, looks pretty good. It's got an alright finish. And so that's the seam, and then we should be able to unwrap the whole thing. Yep, looking pretty good. Let me just get the rest of that out of there. I know there's a slight issue around the pointy bit on the knee, so I'm going to take some care with that so I don't break the cast. But that's looking pretty good so far. So there's the cast out of the mould, it's looking pretty good to me, um, it's actually fairly thick so I think that 2 kilogram estimate was about right and that was based on the helmet being 1 kilogram. And I estimated this is roughly the double the surface area. So obviously I've got these bits that need to be cut off which will reduce the weight somewhat. And obviously at the top there which is just the way that the piece was set up on the mould so all of that will be cut away going to weigh this and see what the actual weight was. Yeah, 2.1 kilograms. So by the time I've cut the rest away, it should be about 1.8, something like that, maybe 1.9. Um, but yeah, we've certainly got a good thick cast of those pieces, so should be fine as it is without any reinforcement. Sometimes big pieces of urethane can warp if you leave them uh, sort of resting or you know, gravity takes its toll on them, but I don't think that's going to crash. I'm not going to have any issue. I think that's going to be excellent. So now I've just got the rest of the pieces to cast for the legs. All the moulds are done, so I've just got the other shin. And the thighs to take care of. So, uh, have a look on my website. I'll be updating pictures as I go with the clean-up process. And painting up and fitting with the rest of the suit. It's xrobots.co.uk